How much time should a small business owner spend on making content each week? Ooh, good question. All their time, right, Trisha? <laughs> no, no, I would say no, not at all. I mean, that's, that's the whole point is this yeah. shouldn't have to be something that you think about every week. I want you to go weeks without thinking about content and just having content work for you in the background. That's the beautiful thing. My business is just me, so I need a marketing plan that I actually have time to do. I never studied marketing, but I know I have to do it. Sometimes I just need help knowing where to begin. I never know if the money I spend on marketing is really paying off. Welcome to Jotful's Marketing Made Easy. I'm Don Verbrigge, Jotful's CEO, two-time entrepreneur, former business school professor, and the one with the marketing experience. And I'm Natalie Bruno, Don's partner in crime, certified people person, and the one who speaks with small business owners every day about their website and marketing challenges. We're here to have practical and fun conversations with people who know a thing or two or three, about how to get more customers for your business. All right. Welcome, everyone. Hello, Natalie. Hello. <laughs> this is a fun one for us. <laughs> this is a really fun one for us. So, so Natalie, when she first joined Jotful, uh, got to experience for the first time the pain of trying to come up with new content ideas for social media. In our case at the time, we were sending out this weekly email, which we still do, actually. <laughs> so every Monday morning, we send an email called Monday Morning Marketing, which is <laughs> just generally just, you know, five quick tips, like five ideas. And a lot of the people on the mailing list tell us that they get those five ideas and they talk them through with their colleagues and they decide what to implement that week to help them grow their business, which is awesome, right? It's like five marketing tips every week. But you know, quickly you you start to run out of <laughs> out of ideas. And I thought that this was one of those never ending topics, and I was never going to run out of ideas. But uh, <laughs> it's not the case. And so when Natalie first joined, one of the first things I did was said, "Hey, Natalie, why don't you start writing?" <laughs> so, yeah, that worked well. <laughs> well you had you had this strategy. You want to talk a little bit about your strategy? Sure. So yeah, I actually laughed out loud when she had, uh, when she brought this topic up. Uh, and you know, I'm always up for a challenge, like many, <laughs> many small business uh, owners. And um, what I, what I ended up doing is John kept, uh, keeps a great content board. We happen to use something called Trello to do this, but you can use a notebook, um, you know, or just a Word doc on your computer. And we have a number of ideas there and I'll read through them. And Dawn, to give her credit, knows a lot more about marketing than I do. And I've learned a lot, but still knows a lot more about marketing than I do. So I look through all of these different ideas and I, I pick one that I feel like is reasonable for me and also interesting for me, but I might not know a lot about it. And so I spend, you know, a half an hour, 45 minutes researching. And what ends up happening is I'm super into the topic then. And then I come up with, you know, three or four more ideas for uh, future blog posts. And then I'm quite comfortable writing a, a blog post for the week. Yeah, it's, it's funny because there's this old saying that if you want to learn how to do something, teach it. And it starts to feel that way with our Monday morning marketing emails, because every week when we send them out, we inevitably have to do that research, right? Even exactly. I have a lot of experience in marketing, but I still go back and I research every one of them because I want to make it really useful. Content. And marketing is, you know, it's, it changes a lot. Right? So it's always changing. So even if you do know a lot about marketing, you've even written a blog post about it the year before, it might, yeah. there might be different uh, yeah. material about it, right? And heaven knows that's true right now, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Well, we have today with us Trisha Winter. We've actually worked with Trisha before. So I knew her, I just think through kind of networking, through local networking, and then we hired her to work with, work with us at a project, um, on a project here at Jotful. So we're so excited that she's joining us as a guest today because we know firsthand how valuable it can be to work with her. Would you like to intro her, Natalie? 
Absolutely. So Trisha Winter is an experienced marketer and a former chief marketing officer. She now runs Focus B2B, a company that provides content marketing services for other businesses. Trisha has always believed that the key to marketing success is being laser focused on your target market, target accounts, and target buying personas. So welcome, Trisha. We're so welcome. excited to have you. Thank you. Excited to be here and talk about a topic that clearly is painful for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. I think, I think whenever you start writing a blog or you start sending out a regular email, at first you just think, wow, I've just got this you know, never ending well of ideas and you, <laughs> it just runs dry so quickly, which makes it really important to have an actual strategy for coming up with content. But before we talk about how to come up with content ideas, let's just start at first base and discuss why it is that we should do content in the first place. Like, why are we making content? What goals can it help us achieve, Trisha? Absolutely. Um, content can be used um, in many different ways to promote a business, but really when you're thinking about um, the areas that we're focusing on today, which is ideas for blogs and for social posts, those are two really great ways to put out contact content that we call organic, right? It's You're not necessarily putting uh, payment behind it to get it out there, right? You're sharing it with others through your channels and it's the way that people can learn about you if they've never heard of heard about you before it's the way they can engage with you become interested and certainly become a customer and then eventually as they're uh, you know a customer it's the way that you can keep them engaged so it's a really powerful way that is inexpensive uh, you know, to really make those connections with your target buyers, your target audience, and really bring them into your business. Yeah, you know, I recently did a poll on LinkedIn because I want to understand why people were, were doing content. And I actually thought that the number one reason would be to generate sales leads for their business. But actually, the number one reason that people reported, and it was a fairly well, um, well responded poll, a lot of people replied to it, was that they wanted to build a relationship with their audience. Mm, yep. mm -hmm. I'm actually glad to hear that. That's how it ended up. That's what it should be, I think. And, and that's really important, too, as you think about this content, it's about um, being trusted and, and having that advisory relationship with folks. And in order to do that, that doesn't mean you're pushing promotions on people. It means you're giving. Mm -hmm. And if you approach your thinking about content as giving, how can I help others? It will come back tenfold. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that you've talked to us about, Trisha, is this, the idea of the customer journey. So I'm wondering mm -hmm. if you can describe the stages of the customer journey and then also the content that is appropriate for each of those stages of that customer journey. Absolutely. And I think one of the things, regardless of what kind of business you have, what we've realized um, over the last 10 years is the customer journey in the early stages is done without you, right? They're investigating you, they're learning about you, and they do that by reading your content in social media, on your blog, on your website. And so there's a lot of that journey that you need to make sure that you're informing and, and helping guide them to make the decision to then engage with you uh, you know, and your business. So you've got that early stages from awareness through to education, then they're actually engaging with you becoming a customer. And then you've got engagement customer marketing, as you want to formally um, label it is becoming one of the biggest areas of focus for all businesses, because it's so much easier to keep a customer and keep bringing them back than it is to keep losing and having to earn a new customer. Um, so content can help you throughout that entire journey if you've got the right mindset about it. Yeah, I, I read recently that something like 70% of the decision to work with your business is made before they even speak to a sales rep. And this is true even in business to business marketing. And we might think of that as yeah. being very B to consumer, right? But it's also very B to B. And so a lot of sales actually, a lot of the sales process is actually happening now 
during marketing and it's being done largely through content marketing, qualifying, addressing yeah. challenges, right? Like all of those yeah. things are now happening during the marketing process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think on the sales side, um, I, I, I'm often on the sales side or I'm networking and what I'll notice is um, I might know somebody pretty casually uh, who says, oh, I've seen recently something you posted that was really great content. Or, you know, I, I look for your posts all the time because I, I, this is super helpful for me. And so it's not only um, the first thing that people are seeing, but sometimes just in the early part of the relationship. And it's a real support on the sales side. And I think mm -hmm. that's really important for a lot of business owners. Yeah, absolutely. Well, can you talk to us a little bit, Tricia, about how content marketing compares in terms of cost to some of the other marketing strategies or other tactics you could employ? I know you mentioned earlier that it's, it's less expensive, but not mm -hmm. all of us are writers and photographers and graphic designers, right? Like, how does that cost, actually? How can you really think about that cost? Yeah, so a lot of people um, are scared when it comes to blogs and social media where you have to maintain it consistently. They're scared that they need to bring on, um, you know, someone on retainer or something to keep working that for you. What what I try to do is I try to teach people how to do a bulk of the work once a year um, so that it's easy for you to manage yourself. Um, you know, so there may be cost if you need to bring somebody in to do that. But when you're talking about paid advertising or mailers or any of the things that you might do to spray out to a broad audience <laughs> that you might not connect with and you've got one shot and you're putting all your money behind that. It just doesn't convert like organic content does. Um, you know, there's all kinds of stats out there. Um, you know, I think it's around like eight to 10 times the effectiveness of this organic content that's made to educate, that's, that's made to engage, will convert people better into your business mm -hmm than anything you put out there paid. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, the costs can get astronomical as far as the reach you try and get to with anything paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that you say that because I heard once and now I just, I live and die by it, that all content marketing should do one of two things, either educate or entertain, right? And or both. Or both, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so true so true and obviously Joffle's really focused on the on the education side right and I consume a lot of the entertainment content as well <laughs> I'm trying to imagine what that would be for us if we switched over and, and did entertainment uh, no. instead of oh you, you have a cute llama it's yeah. entertaining <laughs> that's true <laughs> mascot <laughs> yes I actually got a just a side note um, because we're talking about the llama scout which is which is as Trisha said our mascot um, I got an email from uh, a new customer today who said, you know, I just love it that every time I, you email, I see this really cute llama and this bright pink and orange color. Then <laughs> you have score one for Scout. Awesome. And branding. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, one of the things about content that, that's true when it comes to pricing is that it's not just uh, one shot, right? Like you described earlier with the kind of spray and pray, right? It's actually evergreen. So oh, yeah. you produce it once, but it sits there. It's on your blog and you, it just, it, like wine, it ages well. And after <laughs> a year or after two years, you're still driving traffic in on that content. So even though you may have had to pay somebody else to help you produce the content in the first place, it's actually just ongoing, driving ongoing traffic to your website. Yeah. In fact, that's one of the biggest mistakes or missed opportunities that I see a lot of businesses make is they'll, they'll post a blog post and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll promote it out in social media and then they forget about it and, and don't do anything to drive traffic to it. That blog post, as long as it's still, you know, relevant to your audience, you can still share that in social media six months, one year later, and people will, it's, they're finding it for the first time. So it's still fresh and new to them. So never shortcut, you know, short sell your, your content. Yeah. Uh, it can continue to work for you for a long, long time. 
I'm so guilty of that, right? <laughs> you know, somebody saw that they're going to remember it from nine months ago. No, they're, no. Not. no, they're not. Even people who actually read the content are not going to remember. It from <laughs> yeah, ago. like it's yep. okay <laughs> to put it out on. I'll put it on social again. <laughs> All right, so we've talked a lot about uh, content. However, let's let's actually address the, the, the burning question of today, which is um, how do you, Trisha, who thinks about this a lot, come up with great content ideas mm. and keep coming up with content ideas? Mm -hmm. Yep, and I think with anything that's a uh, creative process, putting focus behind it will help you. If you're on a deadline, you're like, oh, I got to do it for this week. You're probably not going to come up with something very good. Mm -hmm. So I encourage people to have a brainstorm session. And what you want to do is you want to surround yourself with people who uh, understand who your target audience is, that target buyer you're trying to engage with, your, your customers. You could invite customers in to brainstorm with you and ask them what what they're interested in but you sit down have a focus session and you want to think about what pains your target audience is feeling uh, what passions they have that might be um, you know relevant to what you do and what questions they have about the services uh, you know that you are providing and, and that's something I think I even heard you say Natalie that you guys keep a Trello board it's a great thing throughout the year to keep something just in just a spreadsheet a doc something where you can type down when someone asks you a question that you've never been asked before but you think huh that's that's a good question and I bet other people have that question too things like that can um, can be really great to, to add to a list. But if you get, if you bring a team together, you begin to focus on that. And then as you have this list of pains and passions and questions, then go back over that list and say, what can I write about that? And, and so you're, you're getting one, one big list and then you start to break it down and you start to actually think about blog ideas that you can generate from that. Is, is there a particular time of year for you, Trisha, that you do that or that you advise for your clients? So I usually do it um, in December, January time for me, because that's usually when I have some downtime. Well, a, a blog so. post is necessarily a, kind of a meteor item, right? It, mm -hmm. it takes a little bit more time to produce. Social posts, you want to be producing more frequently, right? And yep. for each blog post, we talked about the fact that you should not be afraid to put up multiple social posts about that. So how do you come up with these? I think of them as different buckets of social post ideas or inspiration for social posts. Sure, you've got your third party posts. You know, you see a great article that you think your target audiences are going to relate to, share it with them. Um, then you've got your posts to promote your blogs which again, you should be doing throughout the year. You can use a scheduler and schedule those out. Um, then you've got what I call um, filler posts. Um, uh, and I'll talk about those in a minute. And then you've got um, branding posts is, is the other type. And mm -hmm. I think people miss opportunities by not considering filler and branding posts. So let me explain what those are. So filler posts are ones that um, continue to bring out your important messages in a way that's simple, easy, appealing to your audience. So here's some ideas for filler posts. A lot of people have statistics on their website, right? You use statistics to convince people why they should use your services. So why not create 20 social posts with these statistics and, and then a quick, you know, call to action to your website? Yeah. How about testimonials, right? <laughs> Hopefully we're getting those from our clients. We might have some on our website. We might have some on a, a third-party review site. Why not? create a bunch of social posts with your testimonials. You can even use it as an opportunity to thank people. Thanks, Don, for this great testimonial. We're so happy that we could serve you in this way. 
and yet you're also, you're thanking Don, but you're also getting out that great testimonial. And, yeah. you know, if you've got enough of those, you can be scheduling those throughout the year. Uh, you can also schedule ones that lead to different pages on your website. So filler content is a big opportunity and it's easy. Mm -hmm. yeah, Natalie does an mm -hmm. awesome job with these posts that we put up after, after every one of our customers launches their website, Natalie posts about them. Natalie, you want to talk about like what you write? Because I think the whole thing is kind of brilliant. Yeah, sure. So we always congratulate people because we know it's such a big, um, big moment when a website is finally launched out into the world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and again, we, we do work with people to make it easy and I, I'm not kidding you, joyful, but it's still, <laughs> no matter what, a, a, quite an accomplishment to launch it. So yeah. in, uh, in addition to congratulating them, we actually talk about the, a little bit of their business. So we'll pull some of the content that they have written or that they've had somebody write for them from their site that really describes who they are, what they do. Um, if they're having some sort of interesting upcoming promotion, we'll mention it in there. And at the end, we'll send them off and just say, you know, we're really happy to serve uh, because we are, you know, at Joffa, what we really love is to just serve the small business community. Yeah, I mean, the other brilliant thing that Natalie does is that she at mentions the customer. So she tags the customer in the post. And so what inevitably happens is the customer sees this post and then they share it with their whole network and they say, oh yes, I have this new website. And <laughs> by the way, Jotful built it for me, right? And we, we, you know, we love the experience. It's great. And that's a perfect example of something that's both customer marketing, mm -hmm. but also can engage new prospects and, and introduce them to your business. A lot of people think that because I don't have um, advertisement uh, dollars, right, that, that I don't do branding, right? My brand is my logo or my signage or things like that. But I would argue that you can run a branding campaign in social media that can do wonders for your business. Um, and it can really um, give people a sense of who you are and what you can do for them. So here's what I mean by that. This is where I'll bring in a little bit of the entertainment factor, right? Because a lot of social media, we do want to be entertained, right? Yeah. Um, so think about coming up with a, um, a campaign concept. For instance, a battle cry. Uh, you know, so people love to get behind a movement. So remember those pains that we talked about brainstorming around that your target audience has? Mm -hmm. Turn a pain into, like, flip it and turn it into a, a movement. You know, so if it's the pain of doing their own taxes, it's, you know, you deserve worry-free taxes or, you know, something. Hashtag you deserve or hashtag make XXX easy, right? Uh -huh. Mm. Turn what you do and the value you bring to people into a movement and then you can post pictures with that hashtag and that theme throughout the year. Um, and that's just one idea, right? I love to, uh, my husband and I always laugh at um, home shopping network infomercials that over exaggerate the pain of something you know, oh, isn't it horrible that you have to <laughs> brush your own hair in the morning? Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, you can, you can find something like that that's fun and, you know, have a picture that shows an exaggerated pain and say, you know, don't worry, feeling this way, don't worry, we can help you. Um, you know, so tap into the emotions that people are feeling that you help with them if, if you help make something easy, tap into the stress that they're feeling or the anxiety or the pain that they're feeling and, and have some fun with that. As marketers, we always think that our ideas are stale after about a month. But again, people don't really see them and know them and, and get as intimate with them as we do. Yeah. Yeah. One of the tricks that I do when I'm running low on content ideas, one of my go-to filler pieces is an inspirational quote over and yeah. over, 
right? And then I'll always use a quote that somehow ties back to building a website or ties back to, to marketing, right? And so it ties back to our business. And we get we get surprisingly good engagement on mm -hmm. those quotes where I'm not really writing anything. I'm just grabbing a quote from somebody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just the, it's the emotional appeal. If, if people feel, you know, if they relate to the quote, then, or they relate to the picture, then they like it and they share it themselves. Um, and it's not much work for us. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, so much of content is we spend all of our energy on our business and we know it so well and we think we need to describe our features and our functions <laughs> and our, you know, and, really what people are going to come and and look into your features and functions when they get to your website is if they can emotionally connect to you on how you can bring them value mm -hmm. and you know that's where social media can do a great job for you it's just about stepping in their shoes instead of walking in your shoes for a day <laughs> and and really saying you know what can i do to make their life better yeah. And, and that's, that's the key to coming up with these ideas that really do connect your audience to you. Wow. That is a really fantastic place for us to go to Mike and see if there are any questions from the audience. What tools do you use to manage your content marketing? Oh, that's a great, great question. We can all answer that one. Um, <laughs> I highly recommend you use some sort of scheduler for social media. Um, Cause I find again, just like you don't want to be um, coming up with the content for a social post to promote a, a blog three months after you wrote it, it's best to write all of that, uh, you know, create your social post right when it's fresh and schedule it out. And then you don't have to worry about it if you're on vacation or not. Um, I happen to use one that also um, will re-share some of my best performing social posts uh, in, in Twitter, in LinkedIn, et cetera, um, over, over the, the time. Um, and, uh, you know, I love that. It also has a headline analyzer tool. Um, it is, it is co schedule. <laughs> I'll drop the name because I do love them, but there's a lot of great other ones out there. Um, I've used Hootsuite, um, quite a few others. And then just basic spreadsheets, right, for my ideas. Um, I have used Trello before. I think it's a good one. But, you know, there's lots of uh, free tools out there that can be used as a collection. How about you guys? Yeah, so we use Hootsuite to schedule our posts, yeah. our social posts. We use Google Calendar just to schedule what we're going to be working on over a longer period of time, right? Yeah. So that lets us know what's coming up and then we create the post for it and put them in a Hootsuite to go out. And then as Natalie mentioned before, we use Trello as just our, the place where we throw in ideas. And then as we actually write a post on that particular topic, we move it to the done column. And then I'll add two things to that. One of the things that I keep is just a Google Doc where every post that I write, I start with there for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is so that I'm tracking and can always refer back. I can either grab something I've done before or I can check if I want to write something similar but a little bit different. And, and also just because sometimes if you post on social media, your computer might crash. Who knows if your internet's not down and you've written this thing and then you, you, you lose it. Like I don't want that to happen. So I keep everything. Thing I write in a Google Doc or you could do it in a Word Doc. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing I mentioned earlier is um, when you want to use design uh, software to help your mm -hmm. post, uh, and I'm not a designer uh, at, at all. That's so, true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Don. <laughs> uh, we do, we use a program that I believe there is a free version of it uh, called Canva that even a non-designer like me can make things look um, designer-like and that they're very easily and you can share from there. Yeah, that's uh, pictures are an important part of social media and, you know, the feature image for a blog post too. Um, you know, I found a, a lot of great free images out there with Pexels and Unsplash, mm -hmm. um, it, you know, just to name a few that you, you can you can find some really emotive images um, and, and they're free. Yes. 
Yes, and oftentimes we'll just grab an image from Unsplash and then just crop it way sure. in and just focus on one aspect of it and you get some great images. How much time should a small business owner spend on making content each week? Ooh, good question. All their time, right, Trisha? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I would say no, not at all. I mean, that's, that's the whole point is this yeah. shouldn't have to be something that you think about every week. You know, I'm all for planning ahead and, you know, using the the time when you're um, best able to be creative and to write, yeah. <laughs> to do that and do that in a chunk, you know, and not have to be thinking about that every single week. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would try and shift the, the thinking about blogs and social, um, not as an everyday thing, um, you know, it's, it's great if you can continue to engage in social media and do relevant, you know, day-to-day -day things, but think of it more as a project that you're going to tackle, you know, once, maybe a couple times a year. Um, and then when something does pop up during that week, then you can jump on it. Great. You know, some some new idea, something you can add something fresh in there. Um, but yeah, don't don't make it an every yeah. week thing. I want you to go weeks without thinking about content and just having content work for you in the background. That's the beautiful thing. You're not paying for it. It's out there and it's working for you every day and you don't even have to think about it. Great. Awesome. We'll share that, Trisha. Thank you awesome. so much. Thanks, Trisha. All right. Bye, guys. All set. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's a wrap. If you enjoyed this episode of Marketing Made Easy, please subscribe to Jotful's YouTube channel. That's J-O-T-T-F-U-L. That way, you'll never miss an episode. We'll meet you on the next one.